Marvin, what's going on, man? We're, for the first time ever, we're both in person in the same place right now, recording some uh, additional videos. So mm -hmm. first off, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ecstatic. Good. I'm excited about this one. And yeah, I would like to produce more content for our viewers out there. Thank you guys for um, keep watching our videos. Cool. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about brand registry issues. So I guess my this is a very general question, but what types of issues have you normally seen working with clients on brand registry? Well, yeah, there's a lot. Um, one thing that I can share right now is about um, sellers piggybacking on your listing and you want them to... Uh, be removed from your listings but through brand registry you will report them like um infringing your trademark or copyright or even your patent so um, mm. that's one of the most common issue that is related to brand registry that we usually work with sellers because they sometimes they don't really know what the brand registry is because most sellers are focused on the seller central brand registry is a different portal and um yeah that's very exciting yeah, so brand registry obviously has a ton of benefits for sellers, right? Yeah. As once you get your brand actually registered, which we're not going to talk too much about today, but you know, I think for the most part, just some general advice is go through the IP accelerator. We've normally seen that works best for clients to kind of get through that process quickly. But once you have that, obviously brand registry is going to give you a whole bunch of additional benefits. Yeah. Um, and like you said, kind of the biggest issue that I think you and I have both seen is uh, incidents where a brand either has hijackers or potentially uh competitor listings that are using maybe their images you mm -hmm. know i know we've i know we've uh recently done a takedown request on one of those yeah what would you say the success rate is when you go through brand registry on these types of issues like ip violations or anything like that i would say it's pretty high uh because i mean be, having a brand registry it's a benefit that uh, amazon is giving to sellers so that they can take control of their listings and you know remove any unauthorized sellers so uh yeah the answer to that is i i, I wouldn't say 100 percent because other sellers may have some strategy that you know they can talk to amazon support and say hey you know what i'm not violating this one yada 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 but it's always successful but another thing is you have to also do a test buy unlike before that if you're if you believe that someone in or, or not believe but if you see another sellers on your listing you can just go and log into brand registry and report that seller to Amazon so that they can take down their uh, the ASICs on their account. So we're talking about um, if you're selling a product, you're the brand owner, and then someone else pops up and maybe they gain the buy box or they're just selling on your listing and you know you don't have any official resellers. Yeah. You're saying in those cases, that's where we kind of see like, well, you need to figure out is that a, a real product, right? Because technically you can, like if I'm a, a random Amazon seller, and I go to a garage sale and find a unit of XYZ product, or maybe even 10 units, right? Mm -hmm. In most cases, or a lot of cases, I'm allowed to go on to Amazon. And as long as I have that category ungated or or what have you, or uh yeah, brand gating, then I can sell the product on their on the listing. And normally it's not an issue, right? Because like if you only have a couple of units, you're gonna sell through them pretty quick. However, Sometimes you get someone who comes on the listing, they've got maybe a hundred units or something and you're, you don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would maybe do a, something like a test buy. Yeah. And if you find that it's authentic, authentic product or inauthentic, talk about inauthentic specifically, that's where you would go into brand registry in a file, a takedown or a complaint, right? Yeah. Well, part of the process in reporting another sellers to Amazon is you have an order ID number. An order ID number. Okay. You have to input in the in, in there that you yeah you 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 uh bought it from them and then yeah maybe you can prove that maybe it is authentic but you didn't authorize anyone to distribute it on Amazon. Mm. So and then a uh, one one good thing or practice that I am um doing particularly is to reach out to the sellers first. So if I see them that they have an offer, what will I do is like look at their page and try to contact them and ask them hey. You know, I, I would like to know where did you buy this product? I didn't authorize anyone to sell this. If you will not remove your offer, I will report you to Amazon. And like I'll do that at least uh, two, th three times, like every other day, follow up. Like trying to contact them first. Yes, yeah, because like giving them a warning. And then if not, then I will take a screenshot of the messages I sent because I will use, this, uh, use that as my evidence to brand registry that, hey, you know what? I'm trying to reach out to this seller. I asked them to take down their to remove their listings or their offer, but they didn't do so because I am the brand owner of this brand. I didn't authorize or allow anyone to sell this on Amazon. 
Because, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe so you also allowed the uh, distributors, maybe, for example, you also allowed to be sold to um what you call this one, or like Walmart, and they bought it from Walmart. But then you didn't allow that seller to sell it on Amazon. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to have all of the evidence to make sure that uh, mm -hmm. Amazon will actually accept the report that you Yeah, that makes sense. And then follow-up question is, what if you're a seller and you're on the opposite side of this? Like, what if you're a seller, you only had a couple units, like I was saying earlier, and the real, the real authentic units, you're, you know, it's not like you're breaking any terms of service, but you're selling them on that listing. And then maybe that brand owner does file an IP complaint against you. Yeah. Are there any tactics or things that you recommend for that kind of seller where, hey, they haven't really done anything, you know, they, they didn't mean any harm by it, but mm -hmm. what should they do as a general guideline yeah i think i've shared it before the practice in here or, or the, the best practice to follow in here is to actually reach out to the owner who reported them to an like for example you're the brand owner you mm -hmm. reported me and, and then you'll you, get that contact yeah. information so right? what i will do yeah i will because uh, amazon will give you your email address so what will i do i will reach out to you and ask you that to retract the violation with like making an agreement that i will remove my offer or maybe i will mm -hmm. ask you Hey, you know what? I really love your brand. Maybe you could allow me to um sell your product, and we can have mm. that uh, agreement. And we worked with a couple of brands that that's actually how they ended up starting a, a relationship with one another. Right? Mm -hmm. Is through a complaint initially, and that complaint then opened a conversation, and then the brand owner that we were actually helping mm -hmm. ended up authorizing them or granting them the ability to sell the product. So can also work in your advantage sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So so that you can control the pricing, you know. You guys have the same offer, and yeah, that's just the only thing. Because what you are trying to avoid is actually maybe, yeah, maybe someone like who is selling a fake item, and then your customer received it, and it and the reviews are acid based. So you will receive a bad review. Hey, this product is fake. Then you okay. will see that as well on the uh, product listing as a review. Gotcha. I just want to share this one as well too. Like one of the um, seller that I'm working with. Uh, accidentally something happened on their seller account and their price went down from $28.97 to $8.97 and then uh, another like a customer bought a thousand of that unit mm. and like a month after suddenly someone started selling on Amazon and at a cheaper price because they bought it at $68.97 so now this brand owner is losing a lot of money because they are not winning the buy box and and yeah, it's it's the inventory. It's 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 hard for them to manage. They lost a lot of money for that error that ha that happened on their account. So it's really um aside from that one, I just want to tell everyone maybe you can set up as well like on the back end of your listing to set a maximum quantity that any customer can buy. Because yeah, that's that idea. still I didn't set a maximum quantity so that customer like what a thousand new of units in one order ID question though because and this is a little bit on a different topic but mm -hmm. normally when i've seen issues like that like you know if there's a mistake made and a, a price is reduced way below like let's say it normally sells at 50 dollars, someone accidentally put in five dollars right mm -hmm. doesn't amazon normally flag that as a low price error and then a, a temporarily take it down and send you an email yes. or is that not always a setting that happens Yes, that happens. It depends on the setting on, on your account because there's an, also an automation on the managed pricing that uh, your listing will automatically adjust into the lowest price uh, offer under the listing on the uh, legal mm. page. Right. Actually, this, that seller that I'm telling uh, that I'm sharing earlier, uh, what happened to their account is, yeah, initially the Amazon flagged it as a, a, a low pricing error, but then it happened again like a week after. So I, I think Amazon accepted that price at 8.97 and then started selling it. But yeah, Amazon will not really like uh, um, make you sell the item like 8.97. 8 yeah, yeah. Like cool. Uh, anything else you want to add about brand registry? Well, brand registry have, has a lot of benefits, you know, like on PPC side, you can do sponsor brand uh, video ads. Yeah. And then also the storefront and having brand registry also allow you to see the customers who left the bad review so that you can contact them. Yeah. But there's a lot more. So uh, you should really, as a, as a brand owner or as a private label, it is really advisable to take advantage of the um, brand registry. Uh, and then, yeah, just if you have the trademark or if you don't have the trademark yet, Use Amazon IP Accelerator to have your brand registered. Nice. Cool, man.